When I was a kid, I always wanted a cuckoo clock because I thought they were cool. Well, today, I've managed to find one. I found it in a charity shop and it was marked as uh, clock working, cuckoo not. I opened it up and immediately saw what was wrong. There's a button inside that you have to press to turn the cuckoo on because, of course, some people find them a little bit annoying after a while. So I've now got a working cuckoo clock for one button press. <laughs> Do I see it? So here it is in all its glory. It's actual wood. I'm not going to got the pendulum, it's got uh, two little pine cone things that are hanging off it. I could add two more, it's got just things hanging down for adding more. But here it is, it has a little cuckoo that pops out at the top of the hour. And this appears to turn as well as it's going round through the hour. I think it's really quite cool. I wasn't convinced when you said that you bought a cuckoo clock. I thought it's going to be tacky. But actually this is quite a nice one. Yeah, it's really nice. So it, so you're going to stick it on the wall for me, are you? Yes. So if you want to just uh, hold it up and we'll work out where I need to put the hole. Something about here, just above eye level. So the clock is properly at eye level. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, that is wonderful. Well, there's your thumbnail. Does this water wheel do anything? I believe the water wheel actually does turn as the uh, hour goes round. So what do you think, Jen? I'm really, I'm really, really happy. It's like childhood uh, desire has been uh, achieved. <laughs> Another achievement unlocked. That looks so cool. Yeah, you need to dust it down. It's a bit dusty. It's, it's the little things. It makes the, it brightens up the house and it looks damn cool. So yeah, I managed to get a rather nifty cuckoo clock. I wanted one for so long, and to actually have one, it, it, every time it goes off, it's like, oh, I got it. <laughs> so I've been really happy with that. But it's not the only thing I've picked up in charity shops. And I want to talk about the ridiculous amount of stuff that I've actually found lately. So let's have a look straight into it. What have I picked up? Well, I'm going to move out to where the copy of Fight Club that I've been reading, because it's, it's interesting, but it's not uh, what I was really wanting to talk about. A couple of PlayStation games, Pac-Man World 3 and uh, Lego Star Wars 2 on PlayStation. Great condition. Pac-Man, I think, has the manual. The other one doesn't. Yeah, Pac-Man has a manual. And uh, I already have both of these, but they're great for trading with uh, people. Because uh, it's one of the things that uh, I've had to reach that point. Not everything I need for the rest of the collection is in CEX all the time. But other collectors uh, are looking for stuff as well. So I'm starting to build up stuff that I can swap with them or trade. Uh, I've got these, uh, you've got something that I'm interested in, can we make a deal, that kind of thing. So I'm very happy with that. But some things that I'm keeping, just because the moment I saw them I said, hang on, the, the, these things uh, don't come up much. Xbox 360 magazine, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six of the cover discs for Xbox 360 magazine, including one that has on it Paperboy and Tapper. Yeah, I didn't know they were out on uh, on Xbox 360, so that's quite cool. And there, there's loads of uh, stuff. Miss Pac-Man? What's the other one? Contra? Yeah, Miss Pac-Man and Contra, just on, on this disc. So we've got a few in there. <laughs> Funnily enough, Lego Star Wars 2's on here as well. Dead or Alive 4. Uh, the, most of these are demos, things like that. So it's actually quite interesting what we've got here. Uh, Geometry Wars, Pac-Man and Street Fighter 2. So yeah, uh, there's a nice selection. But a lot of the time there's uh, something interesting on these discs that isn't necessarily the demos. It could be an interview, it could be a bit of information. Sometimes it's a demo that has something in it that got taken out of finished product. That's why I started looking for these. And also uh, PlayStation, PlayStation Magazine and things like that. It's not the only thing that I've found. Because I also got 
Delta Force 2. Now, this is a very old game. It's from 2000. And uh, have a listen to what's on the back. Free, large-scale, up to 50-player, internet multiplayer gaming. Yeah, back when online gameplay and multiplayer games over the internet wasn't uh, just as taken for granted as it is now. The year 2000, that's uh, still a selling point. So it's very interesting. Oh, and also, push to talk voice over net technology. Yeah, imagine that, being able to talk to people in your games. Back in the year 2000, wasn't a mainstream thing yet, so... It's amazing how technology has moved on so quickly. So I'm really happy with those. But they aren't even the only things. It's been a real good time lately. There's, there was a bit of a dry spell uh, when I was doing the rounds in the various charity shops and secondhand places and things like that, where nothing was coming up. And you've just got to plow through those times. It, yeah, it might get disheartening, but you've got to keep going because when there is something there, you've got to be the one that's there, otherwise you don't get it. So I go in every day, regardless of whether it's been a dry spell or not. And it's paying off now. Any idea what this is? <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? Interactive songbook for Sting and the police. What on earth would this be? Well, it turns out it's how to play their songs and things like that on uh, three CDs. Yeah. This is from uh, the point where designed for Windows 95 was still something that uh, was marked on the side of uh, boxes and was a selling point. So I am really interested in this because uh, some of the stuff that's on here is actually quite good. Roxanne. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's got all the information about the band members, their discography. All right, hear that. Features include simple illustration of all chord shapes, enabling even complete beginners to learn accurately and precisely. It teaches you how to play the songs. Three CD-ROMs containing 17 tracks from Sting and the Police musical careers with sound alike solo keyboard and guitar versions. So you can play along, which is actually a really good thing. Uh, it might not sound uh, brilliant, but when you think about it, you sometimes need a backing track. If you're just playing the, the one part of the song, you don't have the rest. It doesn't quite sound right, but you can have the, you can have the CD play along with it with you. That's great. Option for tracks to be practiced either in isolation or in harmony with the full backing tracks. You see what I mean? That's great. Information about the composer and the band's history in a full entertainment section for browsing at leisure. Well, hey, So that'll be interesting. I really think that's going to be fun. But it's not the only thing that I've been picking up to learn how to play guitar. I only went and got Rocksmith and the 2014 version as well. <laughs> so I can play that with the cable. With the cable. So it's great. It's a nice uh, quality box. It's open. But yeah, of course it's open. I've opened it. But it's got the box. It's got the cable everything I need to learn how to play guitar. And if it worked with my very old 80s guitar, I'd be really happy. But for some reason, it's not loud enough to pick up on the cable. The dogs outside are disagreeing with me. <laughs> but apparently, yeah, it's not loud enough for my old guitar to pick up on the cable. So I may have to actually plug it into an amp, which is what it tells you not to do, like plug directly into the guitar. But it just doesn't pick it up. So if I plug it through an amp, maybe that'll work. And I'll just find some way of uh, adjusting for lag. I don't know. But anyway, I've got that. So I'm really, really happy. But aside from that, recently I've been playing Star Wars Shadows of the Empire on Game Hammer Classic Gaming uh, as one of my Let's Plays on Thursday nights. So, of course, talk always goes to, uh, have you seen the rest of Shadows of the Empire? Like the, uh, the books, the, the cassettes, the soundtrack and all of that. Have you had a look at any of them? And I thought, no, I haven't. But the game story is interesting, so maybe I should have a look at it. So I did. <laughs> so the soundtrack CD, which says it's an enhanced CD. I'm wondering what happens if I put it in a computer that actually is compatible with enhanced CDs. I don't think any are these days. It's just how it is. The audiobook on cassette. I kid you not. Uh, not the CD version. I don't. There probably was a CD version. I mean, it was the 90s. Of course, there'd be a CD version, wouldn't there? But this is on uh, cassette tapes, so that's cool. But the weirdest thing about it is, it only states the prices in US and Canada. Two cassettes: 16.99 US, 23.99 Canada. Weird. So did this not come out in the UK or something? I don't know. But I've got it. And of course, the book itself. Which goes with that. <laughs> so you can read along. <laughs> no, you, you pretty much don't. You put, put your audio CD, audio CDs, my goodness, no, audio cassettes into the car and you listen to it as you drive. Beep, beep. Why did I say beep, beep? Guys, 
on that stupid note, I'm going to let you go because <laughs> why am I saying beep beep? <laughs> but yeah, it's been a fun time. It's been uh, it's been uh, good progress. We've uh, added a bit to the collection. That's what's uh, really nice. Managed to expand it in different directions. We're not just doing the PS2. We've come uh, picked up stuff for other things as well. But mainly, I'm still going with the PS2 collection. It's getting really hard, but we're keeping going, and uh, I've been working on Game Hammer 2, so that's coming along. Everything's working out, so I'm really happy, and I hope to see you tomorrow, providing I don't get inundated with work like I did the other day. The moment I'd said on the previous episode, see you tomorrow, I ended up having to work until half past six in the morning the day after, so I was like dead to the world, and that's why we didn't have any extra updates. But yeah, hopefully that won't happen too much in the future. I am... Uh, it's got to the point, let's put it this way, where I am working flat out and Jen is working flat out to try and uh, pump through uh, all the stuff that we're making because we're basically running this business on our own. If we don't do it, no one uh, else does it. So it just doesn't get done. And as a result, it feels like we need an extra person, but we can't uh, justify it with costs yet. So it's at that point where it's like make or break on a business and then we're hoping to keep pushing through until we get to the next side and see what happens. But... Let's hope for the best. Take care. Have a great evening. I'll see you tomorrow. If you like the show, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It really does help create future videos. That's patreon.com slash Zoe Kirk Robinson. And I've got an extra special thanks going out to Chief89, Sam Yates, Retro Mickey82, Mo Henry, and George Botterini. Thank you so much, guys.